Hi, I'm Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopath. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. I also have a home office in Milwaukee. Um, and I like to do these videos to show you how you can make your own medicine with herbs that you can harvest yourself or, or even buy. But uh, it's a lot cheaper and a lot more satisfying and you really get to know your medicine more if you can make it yourself. And you also know that the ingredients are properly sourced if you've sourced them yourself. So that is what we're doing. This is a follow-up for my cleavers video. And uh, today we're going to make a lymphatic massage salve. Um, just a nice, easily not messy form that you can massage into any kind of swollen lymph glands or even say a bruised or sprained or really sore muscle um, lymphedema something that can happen after uh, cancer surgeries um, often in breast cancer uh, other just general points of, of lymphedema and that's just swelling like in your lymph glands like if you've had um, an illness recently you'll often find that your lymph nodes have swollen and maybe you want to massage those well you want to always massage those towards your heart for wherever they are maybe you have swollen legs you want to massage those up towards your heart and you can do that with an excellent lymphatic massage salve and I'm going to show you how to make that today with my cleavers I'm going to add a little bit of Ocotillo bark tincture to enhance that and some essential oils of rosemary which is great for improving circulation in general and stimulating movement and uh, the a sweet orange which is known for helping with the lymphatic movement a um, little vitamin E oil for uh, preservation and uh, beeswax now as we've done before this uh, cleavers oil it's in grapeseed and it is been sitting around now for a few months and it's ready to strain that out um, I probably left it in there longer than I needed it to but we're gonna strain that cleavers oil out and get it warmed up in the crock pot on a low setting and from there we can add the beeswax the tincture and the recipe is basically you want uh, a cup of herbal oil about one or two ounces of beeswax depending on um, how how soft you want it to be um, a couple tablespoons of tincture uh, maybe a tablespoon of vitamin E oil that's good for helping preserve it keeping it from molding if you're using a lot of um, herbs sometimes that can uh, go go bad sooner than you want um, they will last a, probably a year or so you want to use your salves up fairly promptly don't just stuff those in the back of the cupboard and forget about them they're probably not going to be great when you come back and I'm going to add about 20 drops of essential oils and let's get started let's uh, go ahead and take that that cleavers that's been soaking in grapeseed oil those were dried and let's just kind of let's mash them out This is a pretty crude mashing method, but I'm not too worried about it because cleavers are not that precious, so I'm not trying to extract every single bit. I'm, that's close enough. Hmm. It's like one cleaver sneaked through. I'll take that out. And then we got a mini crock pot on low. We'll add that and get that up to heat. And hey, here's my full face. <laughs> Any case, we're going to use an Ocotillo tincture 
in our lymphatic massage salve today. And El Catillo is a, a very prickly uh, herb that goes uh, out in the desert. So not from around here, I had to order this in. Um, and basically you want the Ocotillo bark specifically, and that's known as one of the strongest lymphatic movers, especially known for pelvic congestion and pelvic um, stagnation, but also a good lymph mover for all around the body. And we're going to add a couple tablespoons of that today. Um, basically this has uh, not been strained yet, so I'm gonna pour it through a little tea strainer that should do it. Um, I'm going to use a pretty fine uh, strainer for this because this is some weird lumpy stuff. Might don't want to get uh, a little prickly in your salve. First, I'm going to check and see how warm the oil is. Let's see if that's up to temperature. Looks like we're coming up around almost 140. It's not quite time to add the beeswax yet, but I'm going to go ahead and add the tincture. And one of the reasons I want to add the tincture early is because I want to kind of bubble off any of that, um, the water that's left there in the tincture. A tincture uh, this one is made, let me see, that's 190 proof, so there's not a lot of water on there. So, but there is, there is water in there, and we're going to try to boil that off um, before we salve, turn that into a salve by adding the beeswax, because any kind of water that's left into a salve is going to increase the chances of it molding, and uh, we don't want that, so. Let's try to burn a little of that off um, beforehand. Just stir that really well. Really stir that in. Using a tincture in a salve isn't necessarily ideal, but sometimes that's the form you've got to work with. Don't always have a good dried up ground bits um, or a fresh tincture, uh, fresh herb to slowly simmer in oil get the water out. So sometimes you end up having to use a tincture in there and that can certainly add a component or it can be the base of your salve but it's not going to be quite as strong as if you used a, a real um, infused oil or powder in your salve. But it's a, it's a good way to add extra components to your salve to add a bit of tincture. But you kind of want to watch and see if there's little bubbles that come up um, when, you're, when your oil is getting hot. You want it, uh, those little bubbles to come up and leave. That's the steam coming out of the tincture and leaving, leaving it with less water. This is pretty high proof. So it'll probably be fine by the time it gets up to temperature. Um, and we'll just let that sit for a while and do its thing. I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's some little bubbles that are coming off the bottom, especially when I move the stirrer around. I got a few chunks of cleavers in there, but I'm not going to stress about it too much. 
I can get rid of those later. And okay, we're here at the temperature. I'm looking for about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, you really don't want to go over, really over 185, or the beeswax will start to discolor and, and get really kind of nasty. But around 150, um, the beeswax will, uh, that's its melting point. Um, it can melt a little bit sooner than that, but around that time is a nice kind of target number. And so then I'm going to add my uh, two ounces of beeswax. One to two ounces, depending on how soft you want it. You want to use it probably at least a quarter cup of beeswax pellets. In this case, I used a half a cup of these pellets. Earthwise brand. And I'm just going to stir those around. Let those get melted. Um, I did go ahead and uh, take that oil back through this tea strainer uh, and got out the little chunks. So that's a much finer, finer oil, herbal oil now. And there it goes. It's all melting now. Oh, look at that. That's what we're looking for. All the pellets have just disappeared. Oh, there's a few left right on my little spatula. Let's see if we can get those off in the mix. I'm going to put you in the mix. <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's do this. We are going to add our vitamin E and essential oils here at the end. We don't want to keep them on too much heat as they can denature and not be as effective. The essential oils will go off into the the air like a essential oil diffuser. Go ahead and turn that off now. And a tablespoon of this is a very a fairly concentrated but fairly generic vitamin E oil. You can be more pure if you want to. Mainly, I'm using that as a preservative. Let's go with about uh, 10 of the rosemary. And that's about 10 of the orange. Stir that around a little bit more. Let's go ahead and test that, see how well that is doing. Um, let's see. Basically, let's just drizzle a little on there and let it see how it solidifies. Yeah, that's pretty good. There was actually a little bit of oil still left on that lid and uh, this is definitely very gooey. Another way to try it, kind of like a baby, just a little drop.
Yeah, that's a nice salve consistency. Especially if you're going to use that for massaging towards towards the heart for any kind of swelling especially due to lymphatic stuff mm. and it actually smells nice it's got a bit of a rosemary citrus smell you can definitely smell a background of ocotillo and cleavers in there kind of a, a bitter grass like smell something a little different lingering in the background it's not a bad smell it's a pretty good smelling salve and um, there are some precautions some people say that citrus essential oils can be photosynthesizing so if you are in a an area with a lot of hot sun and you're you have very sensitive skin maybe you don't want to massage this into something that you're going to tan um, so you can time that you can have it in the evening or just uh, just don't plan on tanning after you use this lymphatic massage salve let's go ahead and put that in the jars My hands are too slippery to even open the jars right now. Yep, that's okay. You can see this one's already starting to set. We've got a couple little jars of a delightful lymphatic massage salve made with cleavers, ocotillo, uh, vitamin E, rosemary oil, essential oil, sweet orange essential oil. Um, the cleavers are in a base of vitamin, I mean, uh, the cleavers are in a base of grapeseed oil and the Ocotillo tincture um, that's in an Everclear base. But that is the end of this follow up for my original cleavers video in which I made the cleavers grapeseed oil, lymphatic massage oil, gallium maparine. Yeah.